it's useful to reiterate what average product means. Suppose one has a total product curve. I'll change the color there. So water holding fertilizer fixed, Q, and some curve. The average product is the slope of a line like this. So it's rise over run of water holding fertilizer fixed. That's the that's the average product. In this case, the average product of water. Suppose one observed a farm, and you can make a table with uh, year, water, fertilizer, and corn. And suppose you have numbers. Actually, the fertilizer column is particularly important here. But suppose, uh, well, suppose you, you do have you'd have observations on on all these things. Consider forming Q divided by W. In other words, the, the entry in the Q column divided by the entry in the W column for each entry in the, in the table, so for every year. Q divided by W is sometimes called average productivity. What I want to emphasize is that average productivity is completely unrelated to average product. The reason is that the average product comes from the, the total product curve, and the total product curve is drawn holding all inputs except for one fixed. In this example, fertilizer was the fixed input. In a table of the sort that I've drawn on the right, nothing is being held fixed. Water is changing from year to year. Fertilizer is changing from year to year. And so the right-hand column, the average productivity column, is Q divided by W without holding fertilizer fixed. Fertilizer is uh, changing in arbitrary ways. Now, I'm not saying that average productivity isn't important. What I am saying is that average productivity is not average product. And we're going to be studying average product a lot. We're not going to be studying average productivity at all. So these are two different things. Now, the application where one sees average productivity most commonly isn't water and fertilizer and corn. Instead, it's you know, for different years. It's the kind of stereotypical production function, generic production function that textbooks like to use, which is Q equals F of K and L, where K is quote-unquote capital and L is quote-unquote labor, and Q is some kind of just generic output. Uh, we have talked about the shortcomings of that before, and we will talk about the shortcomings of that again. But, but here, if you, if you graph, if you had a table, if you had observations of K, L, and Q, So in different years, you had different Ks, different Ls, and different Qs. Then Q divided by L is the average productivity of labor. So it's labor productivity. That's what it's sometimes called. It's, how, it's output per worker, how much output you get for every worker that you hire. So you get a set of of numbers. Now, again, I'm not saying that labor productivity or the average productivity of labor is unimportant. It uh, it is important, but it's not what we're studying. Indeed, in the real world, often one of the reasons why labor productivity changes is because you got changes in the capital stock. You're using different kind of machines, and therefore you have a change in in output and in labor productivity. So. 
labor productivity is Q divided by L not holding anything else constant, and therefore it's not the average product of labor. So that's the main point, that, that labor productivity, it, this, you could call this the average productivity of labor. But that's not equal to the average product of labor. And although average productivity might be more interesting than average product, what we can study in this class is the second one. It's the average product of labor. We really can't say much about the average productivity of labor. There are editions of your textbook which try to illustrate average product by examples which are about average productivity. And those examples are misconceived.